in example 21 and part B, we are told that uh, state the range of the function, state the range of the function, and part A has given us this result. So the function of 3 modulus x minus 1 and then minus 2 is the graph we have in here. So the range is now very easy because you can already see it and uh, <coughs> the range of the function of the function tx the, the range of the function tx is y is y is equal to you can see the least value of y is a negative 2 is it is it is is greater than or equal to negative 2 up there we don't know what y can be but at least we can already tell that the least value of y is um, greater than uh, or equal to minus t so that is just basically the range Part C of the same question, we are expected to solve the equation Tx, Tx is equals to a half x plus a 3. And you know what is Tx? The Tx is the function, this one which is already shown here. <coughs> and I would want us to understand a few things that the tx or the function of x it has the original part and it has the moduled part that means what if we construct the graph of y is equals to a half x plus 3 in the same set of axes we will see that the y intercept will be a 3 Meaning that the graph will cut that point, uh, the x-axis at point 3 and the graph will be having a gradient of positive a half. Meaning that yes, it's going to be a graph that looks like that. Uh, it's going to cut the y-axis at 3 and this is the graph of, of y is equals to a half plus a 3, the red part. Having said that, you can already see that um, this graph cuts the original graph Tx in two positions. There is point A there and there is point B there. Point A uh, is actually the moduled part. So we would want to say at point A, the moduled part which is supposed to be originally negative minus 3x minus uh, 3 uh, x minus 1 uh, minus 2 is supposed to be a half x plus a 3 the modulated part which is supposed to be negative originally and uh, <clears throat> We only need now to open these brackets and have and find the value of x. And we are going to say minus open bracket 3x minus 3 is equals or rather minus 2 uh, minus 2 is equals to a half x plus a 3. Opening this bracket you have minus 3x plus 3 minus 2 is equals to a half x plus 3 and let us see what happens <clears throat> so if we if we collect the like terms here we're going to have minus 3x plus 1 is equals to a half x plus a 3 if we bring 3x across then you're going to have um, 3 and a half x is equals to 1 minus 3, which is minus 2. And this is 7 over 2x, 
uh, is equals to minus 2. So what do we do to get the value of x? Of course, we multiply both sides by 2 over 7, 2 over 7. And you realize that our x is minus 4 over x. Uh, or, or, or over 7, not over x. At, at that point, you may think that um, we have solved the equation, but we are not yet. There is still part B that we need to address. And uh, for now, allow me to wrap this part because we are not going to use Mayo in this question. Um, we have exhaustively found out the possible value of x at point A. Remember, uh, the graph y is equal to a half x plus 3. It meets the, the graph of 3 module of x minus 1 at the module part. That's why we brought in the negative aspect. At point B, at point B, um, we are going to talk about, it meets the graph in the original part. So this is the positive part. 3, x minus 1 minus 2 is equals to a half x plus a 3. So, opening bracket, 3x minus a 3 minus a 2, which is a half x plus a 3. So, 3x minus a 5 is equals to a half x plus a 3. If you bring a half x across, then you're going to have um, 5 over 2x is equals to 8 because of 3 plus 5. So, x is equals to 8 times 2 over 5 which is 16 out of 5. And that gives us the other possible uh, value of x. And at this particular point, x is 16 over 5. At this particular point of, um, uh, of intercept, x is equals to minus 4 over 7. So x is minus 4 over 7 and 16 over 5. All right?